What do you think about when you hear that word? I think about growing up with my mom who raised me alone while going to school full time and working full time. But it's also family dinners with grandparents and block parties for the 4th of July. My mom had every reason to give up, but never did. On the spectrum of awesome to awful, family is rarely in the middle. And if it's awesome one minute, it can change in an instant. For some of you, your family means a mom and a dad. Some of you live with an aunt or an uncle. Some of you are with a stepmom, stepdad, grandparent, foster parent, half sibling, second cousin. Every family looks different. The truth is, every family is unique. No family looks the same. However, every family has one thing in common. It's complicated. Family is complicated. Whenever you put a bunch of different personalities under the same roof, things can get difficult. And what happens when disaster strikes in families? Well, as a way to deal with the madness, almost every person settles into the role that they play in the family. Think of it as your way of making your family situation work. You get a role, you play it, and it keeps things somewhat predictable and manageable. For example, some of you are the mediator in your family. You're always trying to keep the peace and make everyone happy. Some of you are the avoider. You keep your head down, your mouth shut, and your mind to your own business. And eventually this will just go away. Some of you are the instigator. Every time you see something going wrong, you get in the mix, give your opinion, and let everyone know what they're supposed to be doing. Some of you are the smart one. You look as the brains of the family. Some of you are the rule follower. You avoid trouble and for the most part, do what you're supposed to. Some of you are the comedian. You turn almost every situation into a joke. This list could go on for days, but think about it. What's your role in your family? This is one of the ones I have listed. Or is it something else? Type it in in the comments below. Everyone who comments will get placed in a raffle for a gift card. I recognize that not all of you would say that you have an active faith in Jesus. And that's okay. You belong here no matter what you believe. But for those of you who have an active faith in Jesus, however, your faith can also add a complication to the mix when it comes to your family. Because sometimes it feels like faith and family don't exactly mix well. For a lot of us, it feels like faith is one thing and family is another. They feel totally separate and they can't help or change each other. So do our faith and family even collide? Should they? Is it possible? If so, what does that even look like? I want to look at a passage today from the book of John where Jesus is with his closest friends. Friends that after spending three years living and traveling with him would have probably felt more like family. And in John 13, the night Jesus is arrested and the night before he is killed, we find Jesus having a final meal with his friends. No one but Jesus knew that this was their final meal together before everything changed. So you can imagine how complicated this must have felt for Jesus. Just like you love your complicated family, Jesus loved his disciples. They didn't do everything right, not by a long shot, but Jesus still loved them. Knowing his time with them was coming to an end, listen to what he had to do. If you think this sounds awkward now, you have no idea how awkward it was for the disciples. Even though foot washing was a common thing, imagine how nasty feet got walking along dirt roads and sandals. Talk about the saying, Jesus feet. Jesus was a teacher and authority and people in his position didn't wash feet. That's what servants did. So the disciples didn't know how to respond to Jesus' crazy act of kindness and service to them. Jesus went on to explain that to one of them that would betray him and told Peter in front of everyone that Peter would deny his friendship with Jesus altogether. It was a complicated moment. Lots of competing emotions and with all of that happening, Jesus tells us and his disciples this. Jesus is saying, you remember what I just did a few minutes ago, how I acted like a servant and washed your feet, how I humbled myself. 
I want you to do that for one another. Show that kind of love, service, and devotion. So how will people know that you're a follower of Jesus? It's simple, love. We are to love your friends, your teachers, strangers, and even your family. In the middle of kindness that's unappreciated and misunderstood, love in the middle of betrayal, love in the middle of denial, love in the middle of unfairness, it's simple, just love. Demonstrating love and difficulty changes you. It makes you more like Christ, and that should be the goal for all of us. God wants to use your family, our family, the good and the bad, as something that grows your ability to love. Why? Because love is what matters most. So what does it look like to love in the middle of a complicated family situation? The Apostle Paul would later write about love and tell us. He wrote about it in what is famously known as the love chapter. In other words, if you want your faith to help your family, then show as much love as you can. It never fails. Think of it this way. When it comes to your faith and your family, love matters most. Trying to love this way can seem overwhelming. So here's a good way to start. Which one of these applications of love stand out to you? Which one do you need to focus on bringing to your family right now? Is it kindness? Is it peace? These things don't make you a doormat. They allow you to be more Christ-like. Pick one of those things and ask God to give you the power to start demonstrating it with your family. Even if you wouldn't call yourself a church person or a Jesus follower, being more kind and patient or being slow to anger will still absolutely help your family. If you're somebody who would say you have faith, love is the best way to demonstrate it. Jesus said himself, I know this may feel impossible, but imagine if your family could actually be better than they are now. And imagine if your faith could actually grow because your family. We believe that it's possible, and we'd love for you to talk to God and your small group about it this week. Because when it comes to your family, your faith matters. And when it comes to your faith, your family matters. And when you combine those two, love matters most. Have a great week, guys, and don't forget to keep calm and love on. See you all on Friday at 7 for the landing. Email me or hit me up on Instagram for the Zoom link. All right, you guys, have a great week.